Hello and welcome. Yes, once again, we're back in the BRTK studios in Nefkosha, and I'm your host, John Ghazi, for another cup of conversation. And before I start the show, today, the airing of this program is the 19th of May. Happy National Youth and Sports Day to all our wonderful viewers. Today, the program, in fact, quite uh, ironically, my guest isn't just to do with sport, although he does play a sport here in the TRNC, but my guest is somebody who I met at a sporting event, at a fun run. His name is Akan Zeki, and he caught me at the SSB Fun Run and Ramble not so long ago, and we met and we introduced each other to ourselves to each other, and uh, basically, Akan is now in the studio talking about his work at Nevis University Hospital and about his passion for, well, what sport? You'll find out more in this interview. So, first of all, I can welcome to the programme. Thank you. Thank you for having me, John. I want to say thank you for coming up to me. You heard my booming voice at the s &P Fun Run back in April, and you, you introduced yourself to me. Thank you very much for approaching me, because it was great to meet you. Likewise. I, I, I couldn't believe that I was finally had the opportunity to see you live in person. I'm so used to the voice. Uh, it's something that it's, I, I'm accustomed to and it's associated with Cyprus and from the first day that I arrived back five years ago I'm listening to you all the time. Fantastic. Thank you for being a great fan of BRTK. So with that we now know that you are somebody who lived abroad like myself. I used to uh, be in the UK in London. You are from Canada originally, is that right? That's correct. I Where? was born and raised just outside of Toronto in a, in a place called Mississauga. Very nice. And your parents are Turkish Cypriots? Yes, both parents are from Cyprus. And obviously, like my parents, they left Cyprus and moved abroad. Your parents went to Canada. My parents, in the cold winter of 1967, decided enough is enough, uh, and they went to Canada. Did they have any other relatives there? I mean, why Canada? I mean, I know lots of people went to England, to America, Canada, to Australia. Why Canada in particular? Do you know the reason why? My late grandfather, actually, he, he just said, you know what, uh, there's a lot of work opportunities, it's easy to get immigration, and there's a lot of uh, opportunities waiting for you, you should just go. And at that time, there were no Turkish Cypriots, for the record in Canada. I actually went where my parents were, it was just a few Italians, some Irish, and that's about it. I mean, there were no immigrants whatsoever. No other immigrants? And that no. was, this was back in 1967? 1967, yeah. Right. Yeah. And so you were born in Canada and you had your education there. Yes. So what was it like growing up in Canada? Was it, did you enjoy life there? Was it easy to... I mean, it's a multicultural uh, country, yes. as you said, you know, you've got the Irish, you've got the Italians, you've sure. got the Canadians themselves, of course. French um, background, as we know, a lot of Canadians speak French. Do you speak French at all? Oui, je parle français. Oh. Yeah. I do speak French, Very good. Uh, for those that didn't understand that. Yeah. But uh, the thing is, uh, in any classroom, I'm talking about a classroom of that 30, between 30 and 35 students. Growing up, it was like, Cyprus? Where is Cyprus? I've never heard of it. What is it? Uh, what's Turkish? There was a lot of confusion. There was difficulties pronouncing my name. Obviously, they would call me. They couldn't say Akan. They would say Akon or Akon, or <laughs> et cetera, et cetera. So it was, it was difficult at the beginning until something happened in tourism and, and in Turkey when things started to develop more and more and then people started knowing about Cappadocia and Antalya yeah. and, then they, and Istanbul, of course. And then people would always approach me and say, wow, you're Turkish, I love the food. I, I'm going back to Bodrum again. And it, the whole image of, of Turkey completely changed in the mid to late 90s. I know it's a bit generalization now if I say that people in America, for instance, not Canada, but let's say Americans, they're not very good at geography, they probably wouldn't even know where Cyprus is, never mind having heard of Cyprus, or they haven't heard of it, or never mind knowing where it is. Yeah. Was it difficult for you to say, I'm, I'm a Cypriot, but where is Cyprus? Or, or when you, people who knew Cyprus, did they think that it was a solely Greek island, for instance? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, we were lucky, again, because of immigration. A lot of people are from, you know, all over the world. Mm -hmm. um, so within that, as uh, soon as I said Egypt, do you know where Egypt is? Do you know the Mediterranean? Just north of there. Yeah, yeah unfortunately, it's a divided island, but we're connected in our hearts. Yeah. But it's a special place, and yeah, that's where we come from. That's where we originate from. 
And as you said, the image of Turkey has increased over the years and people now know Turkey as a great holiday destination. So with Turkey and North Cyprus coming together, you know, I think people are now putting Cyprus on the map as well. Those who've gone to Turkey probably also get to hear about Cyprus as well. Yeah, maybe. over the years, I mean, a lot of my friends have come, uh, obviously, for our wedding, etc. We did do our wedding here. Uh, as well so yeah more more and more you hear of people coming to Cyprus and and how beautiful it is I mean uh, honestly it's one of the most beautiful islands in the world in my I opinion. Agree. I yeah. agree. So Akan when you were growing up in in, uh, in Canada did you ever come back here for holidays? Did you have a link here? I mean did your family tell you about Cyprus where you came from? Uh, did you ever come for holidays here? It's quite far away it's not exactly a place where you could come uh, you know, for like, you know, every year, for instance. Did, but did yeah. you ever come here? As yeah, I, uh, over the years, from time to time, I would have that opportunity to mm -hmm. come here every four or five years, let's say, on average. And uh, the, my first memory uh, being a kid was in Perestorona, we had the best watermelon. We had the best gabak. Mm. We had the best zucchini. And it was always uh, this constant recollection of the fruits and the vegetables and how beautiful the, the seaside and, and this memory and, and so on. There was always this connection and it just seems like anyone that comes from Cyprus knows everyone in Cyprus somehow. It, there's either a relative, a cousin, a cousin's aunt, grandfather, <laughs> some association. Which village? Uh, you, you mentioned a name there. Yes. But what village are your parents from or yeah. where are you based? When you, when you were coming here, where were you staying? Well, my, my mom is actually from Surlarici, from the old city in Nicosia. Ah. My, my grandparents, when they were still with us, they were in uh, Nicosia, close to the city center. And most of my uh, relative, my extended family, uh, aunts and uncles, they're all pretty much in Lefkosha. My mother is from the Surlarici as well, right behind the course. Really? Uh, around that area, near Arab Ahmed. Yes. And that road behind the courts where there was a yes. car park there. Yes. You know where the car park behind the courts is? Yes. And there's some buildings there. That's where my grandmother was. That's interesting. Yes. We'll have to my, talk off air about this. We will. <laughs> we will. We, you said about, you know, feeling. relatives and stuff. You never know. We, we may have some connection there. There could be a connection. <laughs> and my uncle, my yeah. mum's uh, brother, he went to America. Obviously, okay. you know, Canada is different from America. But sure. so, you know, I mean, we have something in common there, maybe. Yeah. We, we have to go I, down I wouldn't, that street. I wouldn't be surprised if there's some connection, connection there. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, um, back in uh, Canada, growing up in Canada, did you go to university in Canada as well? Did you stay there for university? Yes, I, I studied in Toronto at a school called Humber. Mm -hmm. So I was there for four years doing my banking. But I mean, it, it was so close to home, I would just commute from home. It was, it was rough dealing with the traffic. Yeah. As you can imagine, it's no different than London. Yes. It's, there's no downtime. So I mean, yeah. it's just busy all the time. And I commuted to yeah. university as well. When I was uh, in London, I was commuting back and forth, buses and trains and everything. But you know, that's yeah. life then. For sure. What did you study? You said, was it banking? I studied banking there. I mean, we didn't have the luxurious, lovely tube system. I, I'm yeah. envious. I, I love London. I've been to yeah. London uh, twice the last two years. I want to go back again and again yeah. and again. I mean, Toronto is uh, prehistoric when it comes to uh, mass transportation. We have a lot of work to do when it comes to that. So we're all based on our vehicles. We were driving, you know, far That's, too two distances. I mean, yeah. 80 kilometers, 100 kilometers just to get, you know, that's quite difficult, so you know, when you're stuck in traffic difficult. or you're commuting, driving, it's a lot of pressure yeah. on the driver. You can't relax. Yes. When you're on the tube, you, at least you can sit and, you know... You can read your newspaper, read. you can listen to music properly. And, Sleep. And <laughs> relax. You can't do that while driving. No, uh, definitely not. But within that, then we have uh, the other part of uh, Canada, the lovely winters. And mm. the winters, in some cases, long, lots of snow, and as soon as there's a even a little bit of snow, Chaos, traffic chaos, yeah. accident here, uh, this, that, and the other thing. Lots but, of delays. But Canada is beautiful. I do have other uh, Turkish Cypriot friends who are from Canada who are living here, and I have heard it's a beautiful country. It's on my list of, of places to visit. So hopefully one day I'll go and visit uh, the country you you were, you were born in. Now let's come to the fact that you are here living in the TRNC, and you've been here for five years. Five years, uh, April 13th, 2013. Right, was our so arrival you just date. had your fifth anniversary here. That's correct. What brought you back to, well, not back, but what brought you here to the island of your parents' origin? 
It was a combination of uh, circumstances. I know my wife had a really tough time adjusting to life in Canada and she's really close to her family and I wanted to get back to my roots and spend some more time in Cyprus, get to know it better and, and really make an impact while I am here. At the same time, I'm a really avid fan of traveling in Europe and instead of doing maybe one trip every two or three years, now I'm doing three trips every year to Europe. So. I'm taking advantage. Yeah. So your, your wife is Turkish Cypriot? Yes. And how did you meet then? Actually, I was here backpacking in 2009. No. <laughs> yes, true story. I, I, I quit my job. I, I, just, I was too stressed out in that environment. I, moved, I went to New York with the overnight bus. I spent some time there with my friends. I flew on a very reduced flight to Stockholm, spent two or three days there, went to Croatia, and eventually after a 42 or sorry, 52 hour train ride, I was in Istanbul where I greeted my parents. I showed them around Istanbul, and then we ended up going to Cyprus. There was a wedding that year, and at that lovely wedding, that's where I met my wife. Wow. Yeah. So it's like a, a, a great story, a film could be made of this, you know, how, yeah. how amazing is that? That you're living in Canada, but you went backpacking around the world basically, met um, your wife at a wedding in Cyprus. And just like that, I mean, it, it started to happen a little bit at a time and then thanks to Skype and uh, getting to talk and get to know each other. And you know. I was about to ask you a personal yeah. question. I mean, was it love at first sight for each other? I mean, because at a wedding, it's quite a, you know, maybe, I don't know, it's a very short period of time to meet someone and to be able to fall in love, let's say. But was it sort of like, you know, you're looking at each other and... Or who, who looked at each, Who found who first? I mean, who approached who? Did you approach her? Actually, it was my uncle who approached me and said, by the way, did you know that, you know, so-and-so is, is, is available and you should meet them and you should mm. talk with them? And I said, okay, sure, I, I'm okay with meeting her. So it, it was actually breaking the ice kind of but at, after that point we got a chance to spend more time together yeah. we had about i had about 10 days before i had to go back to canada mm. so we got to just do fun things in cyprus and you know so 10 days here then you went back to canada and as you said you were skyping yeah uh, and so it was a long distance relationship but you kept the, the relationship going yes and finally married finally married at the end uh years later we ended up married and we're here, we're happy. You are now. And like, obviously her love for the island brought you here. She didn't want to go to Canada to live there for good. She, it, I mean, the cold, the cold is tough. And, yeah. and being away from your family, especially your extended relatives. And I know how close she is with her grandparents. I didn't want to, you know, over stress it. And at the same time, like I said, I mean, there were other things that, you know, came into the equation. So we did what's best for us. Really good. Well, I hope that you're having a great a married life. Thank What's your you. wife's name? Shengul. Hello, Shengul. And uh, have a lovely marriage, lovely life with uh, Akan here. So I want to go back to how we met, because we met, as I said at the beginning of the interview, at the SSDB Fun Run and Ramble. And you actually approached me. I was registering uh, my family. And you heard me speaking. And you came up to me. And you were actually at a stand there. You were, you were on duty, because you actually now work for Nearest University Hospital, don't you? That's correct. I work with the Nearest University Hospital, specifically with international patients. We have a special office dedicated to international patients and any uh, problems, concerns, any issues, we try to resolve it as quickly and efficiently as possible. Now, I never knew until I met you that there was such a service. I mean, God forbid that we actually have to need a hospital, touch wood, you know, that, um, yeah. uh, that we need a hospital. But yeah. I never knew that Nearest University provided a service for those who don't know Turkish, for you know, somebody like you who's got excellent English. So anyone there, any foreigner who needs help in translating or anything, tell us about your, so what is sure. your typical day like then, Akka? Sure. Uh, we, we start our day off by reviewing our daily uh, patients. We have a certain amount of patients that are staying as an inpatient in the ward. We review them, we go and meet them, check on what their needs are, if, they're, if everything's satisfactory, if the food's okay, if the pillow's comfortable for them. We just want to make sure that they have the best opportunity to rest and not think about their illness. And of course, we throw in the odd joke here and there, because I think that one of the best uh, recipes for health is laughter. So that's an important thing. 
and I, I do uh, whatever I can to make sure that I can get a, a smiley face as much as possible. What a difference from studying, um, you know, banking yes. to now, you know, working at the hospital. I mean, how did you get involved with that? I mean, was it something that you applied for, you saw a job opportunity, or someone said, you know, you've got this great English, why don't you use it in this way? I mean, how did you get with New Near East? Actually, it was my wife who had insisted that I apply to the hospital. And I said, I don't know, you know, too much about hospitals. What yeah. do I know? And I don't want to, you know, get into a position where I may not be able to be helpful yeah. to the people. But what I, what, is, what I was able to do over the time was understand exactly what the patient needs and understand where the doctor is coming from and any loose points along the communication uh, bridge bring it over either either way f either from either the doctor's side or the patient's side just to make it that much easier to communicate our telephones are open uh, 24 hours a day we just want to make sure that everyone's being taken care of and they're going to have a pleasant experience that's a great and very comforting thing to know for any expat living here who maybe has uh, an issue with language problems, maybe communicating. I mean, especially when it comes to health, there may be maybe some questions that you want to ask that you can't express yourself, uh, you know, if you don't have the language. Absolutely. You may want to... I know that lots of doctors do know English here, but if there is a sort of misunderstanding, you are there to maybe correct any, you know, mis conceptions or misunderstandings to give the right information to both the doctor and to the patient, yes? Absolutely. We just want to make sure that the communication is clear. Anything related to uh, previous medical conditions, new medication that mm -hmm. needs to be required or obtained from the pharmacy and the follow-up appointments. The do's and the don'ts because there's always a different circumstance. Everyone's completely different. Conditions mm -hmm. are different. So we need to make sure that everything's clear, upfront, personal, and nothing is missing. Do you have a lot of patients who need your help? Are there lots of expats or people who don't know um, Turkish enough and they need your... I mean, how many roughly a week or would you say that you, you, people come into your, sure. into your office and needing your help? Sure. On average, I would say approximately anywhere between let's say 75, as many as 100, maybe more. It just depends wow. on the circumstances. And not, not only just the expats, we do have quite a few students, student patients uh, yes. that do need their, our care as well. So we're there for them as well. I know that the universities here have a lot of foreign, patient, uh, foreign students, like um, African students, students from Absolutely. Syria, Iran, around the country. So, so anyone who needs... Sure. Your sure. translatory help. And then there's another aspect we didn't get into, but I'll yeah. bring that up as well, is the tourism industry. I mean, there are a lot more uh, tourists from all over the world, as you know. Yeah. And I mean, a gentleman, for example, came from Italy and they had a heart condition. They, were, they had a heart attack, actually. <gasps> and uh, thanks to the good work of our doctors, God bless them, they were able to uh, save his life and make sure that he was okay. So he ended up staying an extra two and a half weeks before returning back to his hometown in Italy. Oh my Italy. God. Yeah. Amazing story. But yeah. obviously thanks to the university doctors and thanks to your service, you could actually help this Italian guy stranded in, in Cyprus with a heart attack and get him through that two and a half week extra stay. Yes, it's, a, it's about trying to make them feel at home. Uh, what yeah. anything, anything and everything they need. I mean, if, if they need to make a Skype call to see their, their families, uh, we're, we're there for that. If, if they need something specific, a food item, as long as the doctor says it's okay, yeah. then we're going to get that for them. Are you on, on call then? I mean, is it like a rotator situation where you have, you know, because obviously patients are there 24-7. Uh, do you have to work shifts or is it, I mean, what type of, of, of working hours do you have? Normally our working hours are 8 to 5, but uh, the phone may start ringing in the morning at 6. It yeah. may start uh, calling you right at 5.05, which is okay. And we, we need to be there for them. So we, we take turns. We, we support each other and work together as a, as a team. So how many of there are you in your department then? Right now we're five in our department. Five. Yeah. That's a good number. That is a good number. We, we do also provide services for Arab speaking and Russian uh, speaking. And patients. French as well. Yeah. With yes. your French. French. French as well. You know, a little bit. Yeah. Je peux. Um, 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 yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. I, I remember my high school French a little bit there. It's all right. So 
I can. Uh, at the beginning of the program, I wish everyone a happy uh, National Youth and Sports Day. And you are also involved in sports. Now, lo and behold, <laughs> Canada, being such a cold country and being so famous for its snow and ice and everything, and being famous for hockey, you are yourself a hockey player, yes? I'm a big time, big time ice hockey fan, a big time ice hockey player. I love the sport, can't get enough of it. Day and night, I drive my wife crazy or anyone who's around me about hockey, hockey, <laughs> hockey, hockey. Uh, half the house is full of hockey sweaters and hockey related equipment, <laughs> etc. We do actually have a team here in Cyprus. Yes. I did tell you about the Solar Bears, that's our team. Yes. I'm the assistant captain, I also help uh, run and manage the team. We are privileged and lucky enough to be uh, guests, special guests in Czech Republic and Slovakia from time to time to have and, and hold friendly tournaments and that sort of thing. Aside from that, I think what we were, we were going to talk about was my inline skating program in Gönjeli. Right, now we'll go on to that, but first okay, of all, sure. hockey. Sure. Now, some people might say, well, how on earth can I can do hockey in Cyprus? Because it's such a hot country, and we don't even have, in this part of the island, we don't have uh, an ice rink. There's nowhere for you, but I believe that your, um, the, uh, the Cyprus hockey team and the Facebook page that you are on yeah. with your wonderful, lovely orange uniforms. It's actually, there's, a, there's um, a rink in the mall in, Cyprus, in, in South Cyprus? Yeah, there's a small ice patch, yeah. if you will, in the mall, in my mall, in Limassol. And that's where we have the opportunity to practice, teach the young kids there uh, how to play, how to skate uh, and play as a team. And at the same time, we get to have a little fun after yeah. hours. I don't know if you know, if you were on the island, but a few years ago, they actually tried to do um, a rink here. They had an indoor, you know, obviously closed, um, fake ice. Uh, it didn't work out. I think, you know, it didn't, wasn't cost effective. They closed down, but they, they were trying to make a, a, an ice skating rink or a hockey rink, but... Yeah, I did hear about it. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to, to reach them yeah, in that time. Yeah, that was years ago, I think. Yeah, it's been quite yeah. a few years, before, maybe before you even arrived on the island. So, are you fulfilling then your, your, your passion for hockey? Are you, are you enjoying it? How often do you go and play and, or train? I train pretty much uh, every day. Uh, even if I'm not unable to shoot, I, I built my own separate hockey net or goal, if you will. And, At home. And I, and I practice every day. My neighbors see me and they, they come by and they wave. And <laughs> I got my music playing loud as possible. Uh, I don't have neighbors to my one side, so I just put the music on as loud as possible. Yeah. And especially after a day at the, the hospital, you want to unwind. So yeah. you get the music playing, you go for a nice skate in the neighborhood, inline skate. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I try to get to Limassol at least once a week. So we have our practice game together as a team. But the last little while, it's been difficult because a lot of people are working and have families. Yeah, it's difficult. I mean, you know, you, you're working hard at the university. Yeah. You've got your, your, your married life with your wife and everything as well. Yes. So it's quite difficult to, I mean, it's quite a far location to go regularly, yeah. uh, Limassol. You are, where are you actually living now? Are you in Lefkosha? Are you in I'm in Yenikent. Yenikent, in Lefkosha. Lefkosha. So, yeah. so, you know, obviously traveling across to the south isn't too bad but again Limassol is not a near place to go regularly regularly yeah. but you make it try you try to make it at least once a week at least once a week if not every other week were you playing Sounds professionally at all in a, uh, back in Canada unfortunately I didn't have that opportunity but I was playing amateur leagues mm -hmm. uh, just before arriving here and I've I've always had excellent excellent uh, teammates before and now I'm, yeah. I'm very lucky that way I'm amazed, I mean, you know, how you can keep that passion going here in your back garden and, you know, one-on-one -on -one and, you know, with your, your, all your, your equipment and everything. I mean, are you wearing the whole outfit or, or not when you're practicing? Sometimes <laughs> I do. It depends on the season. Of course, if it's the middle of summer, I'm, I'm not going to do it. No. I'm not going to do it. I, I, we just stick with the basics, the shin guards, the elbow pads and some gloves. Sometimes you play without a shirt. I mean... You're not supposed to, but we do. Yeah, <laughs> it's just too hot. But in good. the winter, I, I, especially when we are getting closer to a tournament time, I like to make sure that I wear my equipment so I can feel the weight because yeah. there's adjustments that need to be made. Of course. So you have to be as ready as possible. In the um, group that you are with, the uh, the Cyprus uh, hockey team, with your orange, you know, we've got the Cyprus uh, Facebook page there. Um, 
are there lots of people that are interested in, in, in hockey, in ice hockey like this, in the, in the South, or the North even? I mean, do you, when you speak to other people, are they going, you know, what are you talking about? Or are there other people who are trying to get into this sport as well? I think most people do understand and recognize the sport for what yeah. it is. And, they, and thanks to the satellite dishes and how, how watch. the evolution over yeah. time, there's millions of channels. People are more aware than maybe 10, 15 years ago. The problem is trying to learn a new sport from scratch with no infrastructure and that becomes very difficult. I know people want to try and they want to show up, but finding the time away from their families, it, it's just, it's a very difficult thing. I, I, at the beginning I was very, very hopeful that I can draw in new players to come and join us. But it, it, it never happened, actually. <laughs> I've had, you know, God bless them, a few friends that have come out one or two times, saw us, uh, appreciate the opportunity, but uh, they realize that it's a lot of work and it's a full dedication. Yeah. Uh, the people who are involved are a lot of people from the UK, Slovakia, uh, Poland, Czech Republic, Russia, uh, and, and, and of the like. I mean, but from Cyprus, it's been very difficult. It's not a sport that's probably um, recognised much here because of the climate and everything. People know sure. about ice hockey and the hockey in general, but you know, this is not a country where, as you said, there's no infrastructure, no way to play it very easily. Yeah. Uh, why, it's not widespread. But skating is widespread, isn't it? I mean, skating, we like, everyone likes to skate, don't they? Yeah. Do you I, ice skate as well? I, I actually learned on the ice. I, yeah. I started when I was about seven years old. It was a close friend of mine, and he said, I'll, I'll take you out. We can go skating together. And yeah. He had an extra pair of skates, he let me borrow them. Yeah. I started from there, I was about seven years old. And so you can skate quite well as well? I sk I, I'm pretty good, I'm yeah. pretty good. <laughs> I, I mean, say, skating yeah. is another sport that is really beautiful to watch. Um, very, very you know, powerful, very good. I mean, you look and you, 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 uh, you, you sound and you look very fit. Thank you. Uh, you know, because <laughs> of all the sports that you do. And um, uh, it's really amazing. So tell us a bit about the, uh, you mentioned that you are part of the, uh, the Cyprus hockey team, but also that you have um, the Gunyali Sam uh, ice hockey, or the, the, not the ice hockey, the, the Paten, the skating course. Tell us a bit yeah. about that then, please. It was a very cold evening one night. I was, I was in Gunyali and I saw that they have uh, this social activity merkaz. Yeah. Activity uh, for the kids and, and for the adults. And I said, well, I, I need to get the kids involved and I'm just going to give them a shot. So I put my CV together and I passed by and I spoke with a very uh, lovely lady by the name of Emine Behlul. And she took the time to listen to me. And as soon as I walked through the door, she said, we've been looking for you. We want to have an inline skating program. I said, OK, that's perfect. That's why I'm here. <laughs> and, and we really hit it off well. And she's a close friend of mine. And she's constantly helping me throughout uh, to get things organized and to find the time. Uh, actually, what, where we are right now is actually at the Gönjeli Ilk Okul, at the elementary school. They have a closed off uh, gymnasium. Right. So thanks to Gönjeli and, and the efforts of Gönjeli Sam, especially Emine Hanum, she's been very helpful. Uh, we've been able to establish uh, our, our program. It's over two and a half years now, almost three years. Really, I never program. knew this. Seriously, yeah. again, something that I am yeah. totally, uh, you know, unfamiliar with. I never knew. I mean, I've heard of Gönül Islam. I know that they are doing lots of great things, um, you know, bringing arts and culture and sports to to the people of of Gönül. But I never knew that there was such a, a, you know, a skating inline skating program at the primary school, as you say, elementary school there. So. What's it like then? So what happens there then? You, you, you're teaching the youngsters. What age are you teaching? We're starting from four years old up until 199. I, there's Not no the limitation. Anyone. anyone and everyone. Uh, we've had parents. We've had parents of parents and friends. And anyone who's curious and want us, wants to try out, it's open to them. And we're talking about the skates that have got the... The wheels. In, in line, yes. In yeah. the old days, there were the, the four skates. Yes. The four wheels yeah. uh, in a square position. They, they put them in an in line, so they call them in line or rollers. Yeah, one, one roller. um, line of them, yeah. yeah. And so and with that, um, the lovely shiny uh, uh, floor for the, for the school, for their, um, where the gymnasium they have there, yes. they're just skating around and around. Around and around we go. Yeah. Uh, the way we start, the way we establish it is, it's, it's a free and open environment. I like the kids to be able to make 
make their errors, make their mistakes, and talk to them and speak with them and say, look, I see that you're doing this, that's okay, but if we try it this way, it'll be a lot easier and you'll get the results. And I'm, I'm blessed. I mean, the, the kids are fantastic. They're very good listeners. They're a lot smarter than, than, uh, than me and they're just adapting to the situation and they're, they're on top of it and we're getting it, you know, sorted. So when yeah. you're, um, you know, when you're in line skating, you, you, I mean, what can you do? How does that develop as a sport? Because I remember when I was skating as a youngster, year, many years ago in the UK, we used to have, you know, hills in our area. We used to, um, obviously, I had the old style, you know, the, the, the four wheels, uh, and with, with, the, with the thing the, at the front where you used to stop, it used yeah. to be the, your, your break. Um, but it was quite, I mean, that was quite dangerous there. We used to go down the hills, and, and that was it, just going running around with our friends. But here, uh, how, is, it, is it a sport, or is it just for recreational fun, just to have, you know, fun going around. What is the aim of, you know, inline skating? The aim that we have uh, in our program specifically is to have the kids have social interaction, yeah. learn how to work as a group and as an individual and a leader. Uh, I'm trying to instill these qualities. These were passed on to me, thankfully, from the people that I had around me growing up, and I want to make sure that that's carried on to them. Uh, we do it in a game, in a fun environment. I, I make sure that the kids aren't listening to me for a full straight hour while we're there. Uh, I allow them the opportunity to be creative and to have uh, additions to the games that we do play. So not only are they adding to it and being part of it, it, it gets more out of them, and, and they're more adamant to want to listen and to participate. Are you finding it's a, a popular sport now amongst the youngsters? I mean, are you getting a lot of people, uh, those who hear about it, coming and joining you? Is it uh, becoming popular? I mean, how many, roughly, how many people do you have, I mean, as you said, from four until 100 years old? I mean, yeah. roughly, in any one session that you have, how many people do you look after? Usually we have between 15 and 20 students. That's a good number. Yeah, and, and most of the people that are coming now are referrals. And referrals are fantastic and I thank the yeah. parents mm. and the children because they're bringing people who are interested, focused and are ready to learn, really. Do you think that, for, I mean, I, I imagine skating and uh, what you're doing, your sports, lead a lot of um, technique, balance, is it good for, would you say that this is a very good sport for, for all youngsters to enjoy, to get their posture, to balance, maybe it can help them with other sports that they are playing with in the future, I mean maybe they don't want to go into, because um, they can't easily here into ice hockey or anything like that, but would you say that to, to do skating like this at the beginning now is a good way to help them with other sports in the future? Absolutely, it's an excellent question actually that you bring up. I mean, it'll give them the opportunity to play any sport. Mm -hmm. You did mention the balance, definitely. Balance is one of the key things and we work at it every time. I know I, I drive them insane sometimes, I drive them crazy, but it's important uh, if you don't have your balance and that all starts with uh, positioning of the feet and having the right type of uh, posture. It all works hand in hand. But the, the thing I love about inline skating is it works on your coordination because you are doing something that's completely away from walking. Everybody initially wants to just move their feet yeah. forward and back and, and nothing will happen of course because there's, there's a reason for it. So you want to be able to uh, keep it simple and, and let them go with it. It will also allow them to play uh, ice hockey, as you mentioned in the future, yeah. but any sport, and especially skiing. It's a huge plus. You, yeah. can you can learn how to ski a lot easier if you know how to skate. Yes, and of course, um, I know that uh, in the winter time, especially in February, a lot of people go to Turkey, to Ulda, to Bursa to, to ski. So maybe, you know, again, if you have that in your mind, if you're a skier, then you can skate. If you're a skater, then you're a skier as well, maybe. That's exactly how it you works. Ski. I do ski. I love skiing. I, I wish I could ski more often. It's, it's a little difficult being here in Cyprus, yeah. but I'm hoping to plan something for this winter. Okay, in the winter, you can go off to your nearest oh, location is in Turkey there. Turkey. So. <laughs> or, maybe, or maybe the Trodos Mountain. Trodos, which, yeah. yeah, Bulgaria. Yeah, yeah, why not, why not? How often do you have these uh, lessons then at the uh, school in, in Gönyeli? How often, how many times a week? We're doing the classes right now once a week mm -hmm. from 9 till 10, Saturday mornings. 
but we are looking to expand that. I know a lot of the parents do want to have uh, two or three hours at least, and that would be recommended actually uh, to be able to develop as a skater. Right. So we're, we're looking and hoping for good things in the future that we may actually have a dedicated skating facility. Fantastic. So at the moment, it's one hour from 9 to 10 every Saturday morning. That's correct. And what do people do if they want to join this group? Do they go to Gunyali Municipality, Gunyali Staff? How is it linked? That's right. They can go to Gunyali Municipality and mm -hmm. just register their kids from there or go to Social Activity Merkaz yeah. and the activity uh, is registered, yeah, they can do it that way as well. Do you enjoy being a teacher like that? I mean, are you enjoying bringing uh, your love for this sport to others as well? This is an absolute pleasure. Uh, I cannot stress how wonderful it is. I mean, when, when you see the kids and you, you see they're, they're, they're cued in, they're, they're having fun, everything else dis disappears and doesn't matter. Absolutely, I, I, I cannot be any more happier at having this opportunity to share with the kids. It is amazing, Akan, because I wouldn't have thought that coming from Canada and with that background that you have in Canada, that you'd be doing anything like this at all here in North Cyprus. But the fact that you brought that here as well, I think it's a credit to you to show that you know you, you are passionate about this sport, the sport that you love, and there's, you, you found a way to keep your passion alive by going to your own you know, sports club, the Cyprus hockey uh, team, and also here in, in Gönyeli, in Efgosha, you're teaching others skating, which is, is fantastic, isn't it, really? Thank it's you dream very come much. true. You're amazing. It, it, absolutely, you're, absolutely. But your determination <laughs> is amazing as well. How lucky you are. I am, I'm, I'm really blessed. Just the same way how, how we got to meet. Yeah, how it we got all to just meet. It tends to happen. Yeah, things happen in life that are, are, are good, that are meant to happen at the right time. Yeah. Have you, over the past five years, you know, settled into the Cypriot life now? I mean, you saw what Cypriot life was like when you were a child. You came back and forth every now and then. You've been around the world. You've backpacked, as you said, you like traveling. What's it like to live now in Cyprus? Have you become more Cypriot-fied <laughs> in a way? Or are you trying to, to yeah. bring your culture to the Cypriots here? I, I think with everything else, it's just about balance. I, yeah. I do become, uh, I, I look at myself sometimes and say, I never used to complain about driving to Kairinya. That's only <laughs> about 20 minutes. What, why am I, why am I uh, refusing to go to Kairinya now? So, you know, to do that little drive. So in that regard, when it comes to tr driving, I want to drive as least as possible. <laughs> that is the same yeah, with me. That's... That is amazing. I came here when I was um, first working at BRT and they said to me, oh, you're going to come to BRT and work and you're going to come yeah. from Guinea every day. And I said, yeah, you know, what's that? And I used to travel <laughs> over an hour in the UK sure. from yeah, home to, to, to oh. university or whatever. I said, yeah, what's that? But now, say to me, go to Gazimausa. Yeah. Oh my God. It's like, you know, you're making me go to the end of the world. No, no, no. Yeah. Isn't it funny that that's one of the things that, you know, you, you become, everything, even though the distances are, you know, minimal here. Yeah. You know, what, is, yeah. what is a trip to the Karpaz or what is a trip to the to Gazi Melsa when you're in Nefkosha? But for us now, you don't want to do it, do you? <laughs> no, I mean, I'm, I'm a person who's driven to Miami 24 hours nonstop no. through the night. <laughs> nonstop through snowstorm, hailstorm, yeah. windstorm, tornado. Hurricane, I've driven through it 2,000 kilometers one way to one get way. to Miami, and I've done it from Toronto. And now you don't want to go from... Now I won't go to Kairin yet. To get there. <laughs> I'll stay local. you stay local. Yeah. But um, you know, all that you are doing, you know, your, your, your professional work is for caring for people, your, your social life, or let's say your, your sports, your hobbies, again, you are teaching or with people. You, are you a people person? Do you like to be interacting with people all the time? The, the, the number one thing on my agenda is meeting new people, getting to know where they come from, what their life was like, relating with them and sharing some of my experiences. It, nothing gets better than this, aside from working with kids, of course. Yeah. yeah. And you were saying to me that New York University is trying to um, send you guys out to various events that are aimed at the expat community. That's why you were there, the uh, fund uh, run at the other day, the other week. Um, is that what the University University is trying to do, to send a message out to the expat community that we are here, if you need our services, Nivis is here? Because I never knew about you until you met me. 
Yeah. So, will you be will you be attending other events in the future? Do you think? We, we we've been more adamant to to be part of uh, these types of organizations, mm -hmm. these fundraisers, and in the future, it's going to happen more and more frequently, and and we hope to be invited and be part of them. And mm -hmm. now we have our contacts as well. We can yeah. assist and work and work together in the future as well. Because it's important to get the PR out there to, to actually say that we are here because. I, I, I think it's an amazing service that you give. I mean, even though Chilips itself is a, is a charity with lots of people speaking English, and that's why the expat community are helping Chilips because Chilips has, with, under the banner of Razia Kojay Smal, the Health and Cancer Association, they have um, a lot of uh, sympathy for the expat community, those who have to go through, unfortunately, cancer treatment here. Yeah. So you're working alongside with them in a way. Uh, you're saying, well, look, we are here as well. So whatever you need, whatever trip you need, whatever physical problem that you have, yeah. you know, someone like Akam will be at the, at the reception or in the office saying, I'm here to help you. Yeah, yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And and maybe maybe they don't have any problems. Maybe, maybe they just want a clean bill of health and they yeah. need to come in for their checkup. So so we're there along along that path as well. Mm -hmm. We want to make sure that that nothing is missing and their follow ups are, are routine and they're on top of their health. Yeah. Very, very good information. And so let's say somebody comes in to the hospital, where are you based? How do we find you within the hospital? At the front desk as you're entering, on the right side there's a long desk. We're just behind there so you, anyone can come at any point and ask mm -hmm. for an English speaker uh, or anyone from the international office yeah. and that's automatic uh, for us and we're, we're there to, to help. And most of the time there's always somebody there, at least one of you there, who's speaking English who can help with any inquiries, exactly. any problems. Or, or just finding their way through the hospital because sometimes you need a giant uh, road map <laughs> to yes. get through it. Well, and even it just might to get to the hospital <laughs> in, the, in the, you know, New York University campus is quite big as well. But one, Yeah, within that, I'll just yeah. add this. Uh, the one good thing, uh, that I, not, not that there's just one good thing, there are many good things. Yeah. Recently, that was added. There's a red strip as you're entering. Mm. I'm sure you've seen it. I've so seen it. as you're entering, just follow the red strip. It'll take you right into the emergency. You can just park your car there. It's quiet, and then slowly enter into the uh, towards the front front main foyer. Is there a, yeah. um, a number to call? Maybe if someone wants to make an appointment or want to chat with you guys, do we have a, a central number? that people can phone to contact you? Or is it easier just to come and see you face to face? It's just easier, but if they do need to contact, they can contact the main hospital line. Soon as the prompt comes up, our extension is 2032. Right. Okay. Okay, 2032. So you can ask for an English speaking person and they get through to Akan maybe as well. <laughs> so um, I just want to say, you know, it's been a pleasure to meet you and to, to get this such a good energy from you, Akan. I'm sure that you are a great asset to every institution that you are involved with, be it in English University, be it with the Cyprus hockey team. If anyone here wants to learn more about hockey or to join uh, the Cyprus hockey team, is it easy to get through on the Facebook page? Facebook page works well. Yeah. I'm, I'm checking constantly. And I do have people that do come and approach me from time to time via yeah. Facebook. And it is a very valuable tool. I mean, do you, when you say you go to uh, Limassol once a week, is there a day where you have a, a, a match or you train properly? What day of the week do you go normally? I usually go Thursday nights. Thursday nights. Thursday nights, yeah. So um, they can find, it's, it's Cyprus Hockey. Look up Cyprus Hockey on Facebook and you can see, as you pointed out, the, the orange uniform. And Akan is in that photograph as well. And again, for the Gönyeli Sam, go to the Gönyeli Municipality and they will give you information about how to join your... Uh, your group. I mean, there are lots of things that are going on with Gönyeli Sam, isn't it? It's not just inline skating, lots of things going on. They do have but, art classes, yeah. painting, yeah. Uh, karate, uh, yoga, just to name a few. Just, just name a few. But yeah. inline skating with Akan, it must be one of the best sports here, I think, in the TRNC. Thanks. By the way, can you get inline skates here? Is it easy? Or do you provide the skates for the people? You, you would have to obtain these skates yeah. on your own. There are a few places here mm -hmm. uh, that are available and there's always online. As right. Well. And you can help them with the purchases if they want to take it Absolutely. seriously, this sport. Yes. Mm -hmm. Any way, shape or form. Fantastic. Well, Akana, I wish you all the best. 
uh, for the future with your work at New York University and with your career in uh, skating and hockey. Uh, you really uh, enlightened me here. This is one of the most interesting interviews I've had in a long time because it's something new to me. So when I learn something new, I hope our viewers have learned something new as well. I thank you for sharing all your information with us. And I hope that you know, you'll come back again in the future. Maybe one day you'll be here to talk about how you have established now a hockey uh, team in the TRNC, or maybe even yeah. there'll be a, a, a rink here. Yeah. An ice rink. I mean, anything is possible. Anything is possible. And I would love to uh, come back again. I yeah. thank you. Thank I you. I thank you very much as well. It's a pleasure. And give my regards back to everyone at New York University and to your lovely wife as well. Will do. Thank you. Thank you very much. And with that, we've come to the end of our very interesting chat with uh, Akam Zeki. And you can find him at New York University. You can find him on Facebook as well. And hockey, health. What a way to end this special edition of A Couple Conversation. And once again, the day that this program is aired is the 19th of May. Once again, happy National Youth and Sports Day to all our viewers. Until next time we meet here in the BRTK studios, take care and go well. Bye-bye.